Come on, Cosmo. Alright, what's up everybody? So, I wanted to get on here and, um, and play some Shredder's Revenge because we got one more trophy to get. We got that No Need for Mutagen trophy and I'm on my last turtle in story mode. I just gotta get Leo up to 10. So, after that, we're gonna have the Platinum. So I wanted to come on here and uh, get the, uh, the Platinum with you guys. And of course we got Leonardo here, he's already at uh, level 4, so I've done some some background work on this, but you know, you see his stats and not spectacular or anything, but just kind of average at everything. So Leo, as you'd expect, like the Mario of the Ninja Turtles, you know, 2-2-2 two, 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 instead of 3 or 1 in anything. Alright. No, not Casey. We like Casey Jones, but we're not going to play as Casey Jones now. So, just gonna play through the story and see how far I can get until I get to level 10. We're gonna start off here at the uh, the first episode. And uh, I love these little silhouettes, these intros they got here, because they definitely throw back to Trolls in Time, like I said in last week's show. Uh, the little silhouette of the boss there, the the name of the episode, like, I, I love it, so. And this is cool because um, going into this level, like, I don't think, you know, Channel 6 has always been kind of like a, a staple uh, location in the Turtles universe, but I don't think within the games that we've ever actually gone to Channel 6 to have a level, so like, to have like something fresh and new as opposed to, you know, just starting on the streets of New York, I definitely think that was a good place to start for this game. Definitely gives it a new feel that, you know, we may have not tread already tread this ground before. Gotta use that roll to evade. Oh, see? Use that to get through some enemy attacks. Oh. Boo. What's up, dupes? You know, just kicking some ass here. Oh, I still can't get that finished level unharmed. Look at that, someone leaving their trash there on the ground. I tell you, working with adults sometimes is like working with kids. Can't nobody clean up after themselves. All the... I never know. It took me a while to notice that the Foot Clan in the back, they have ties on, those little blue ties. And then, of course, I love the animation. They all throw off the tie at the same time and then jump into battle. Great. Yeah, it's the last trophy, dupes. It's the uh, No Need for Mutagen. Leo's the last last hero I need to, to bulk up. It's very wasteful. Yeah, if I only knew a garbage man. Well, Tricky likes to send his trash to Ohio, so... As all of New Yorkers do, so he's just gonna pawn it off on somebody else. And of course, going through the, uh... The, the TV station here, we got all different shows coming up. We got the cooking show here. Of course, a great soundtrack. This game's got a really, really good soundtrack. I just love the animation of all, like, the foot soldiers be you know, a lot of them being in the background, and then all of a sudden they just join the fray. And that's something, you know, we've seen in previous Turtles games, so yeah, like, this this game definitely, like, it doesn't feel like it's trading old ground, but it definitely pays homage in a very special way. Like, it just feels like a brand new Turtles game, while still managing to, you know, hit some of the high notes from previous games. 
or at least take uh, inspiration. Oh, we got the um, the exercise show going on here, and I love how the uh, the foot soldiers they were uh, they had shields ready. They were doing like sit ups, but they're always ready to fight the turtles. So they had their shields ready with them. Got the hazards gonna follow me. I because I did this level for the uh, the no trophy or for the uh, the 250 combo run. Uh, I play this level for hours and hours straight, so I know this level really damn well. We got the talk talk show scene in the back. Yeah, I just love it love moving through the different scenes of this this episode. And after we kill this guy, boom, from the top, let's go. And uh, I haven't used any of my special moves here. Probably should do that at some point. You're done. Got all the spray paint in the back, the foot defiling everything. Ugh. Yeah, this game is definitely ripe for some DLC dupes. The, um, I mean, I know we've talked about it, how the, um, I'm gonna stop here, I'll talk. How the, the creators have said that, you know, based on the reception of this game, financially, if it does well, they'll consider DLC, so nothing's planned, but, you know, we got Mr. X's Nightmare for Streets of Rage 4, came out like a year or so after the game, so, you know, they'll they'll invest in the game, and if the reception's there, they'll definitely um, put out some stuff. And I think that this game probably, I would I guarantee, because it's the Turtles, that this game probably will have sold in the end better by, better than Streets of Rage 4, so I would, I'm hopeful for some DLC. I'm not expecting it, because that's just setting up for some kind of, you know, disappointment, but I definitely think that, you know, there's a good chance we'll get it. And of course, Bebop's janky camera set up there. And Sp Scott Pilgrim, that's another good beat em up. Um, and obviously, based on another uh, license, a graphic novel license, like where the Turtles is originally a comic book license, so definitely has the uh, the footprint there, the the installed fan base before that game ever came out. Another great soundtrack, of course, from Anna Monaguchi. Um, yeah, I just don't have the the love for Scott Pilgrim that I do for the Turtles. You know, it's probably, you know, the Turtles being what a franchise has been around since the 80s. Uh, probably, you know, Scott Pilgrim, as good as it is, definitely doesn't have that insult, as big of an insult fan base, but definitely they did something special. Ubisoft did something special with that, that license, too, so I'm glad people can play it again, because for a while there was taken off, off uh, online stores, and, you know, I'm glad to see it's back. But my god, such good music to this boss fight. And again, I love the flashing of the bosses. You had that in the old Turtles games on the NES I, and the arcades. I love the fact that they brought that back here. And uh, the enemies, like the bosses, can run into each other when they're charging and, and cause damage. Just nice little touches like that. Oh, rock steady, you boob. I can't believe after all these starring roles that uh, rock steady can't afford a bigger T-shirt. All right, level two. And the cool, the cool thing about this is you'll see uh, in the episode title that in the original game, or I shouldn't say the original game, in Turtles in Time, the first level where you fought on the high rise at night and you fought against Baxter Stockton at the end, it was called Big Apple 3 A.M. Well, here in the second level of this game, we have Big Apple 3 P.M. Just another throwback. And of course, the second level of Turtles in Time was Alley Cat Blues, which you fight through a series of alleys to get to Metalhead at the end, and you're doing that now just only with Rock Setting. And really, what other way should you begin a Turtles game? What other two bosses could you start with than Bebop and Rock Setting? I mean, I know they've done it before. As I just said, Turtles in Time, they did it with Metalhead and Baxter Stockman, but Rock Setting and Bebop being on the front lines in the first couple levels just kind of feels right. Got to see some of the Foot Clan there steal the uh, the tire off the the turtle van. Go Green Machine! All right. Oh, we got uh, pizza in the back for the turtles, and we got sushi in the back for Master Splinter. Loving the anime. God, those swings of those axes. Love the animations. Come on. And you can bat, uh, there's obviously a trophy for projectiles for batting back projectiles at enemies. You can, um, bat those back. The, uh, sewer caps. 
at uh, at the, the enemies. We got Bebop back here. Just the little touches we got in the top there. He's doing some new segment. He looks like he's a lawyer over here. He's doing aerobics here. Jumping jacks. He's a, he's a chef here. With the, We got the poster here. So just lots of little stuff that just you gotta love. Come on. Boom. There we go. And again, you know that it's coming, but you just love seeing all the places the foot come out, come out of. And uh, definitely grinding with all the turtles to get up, up to level 10 has helped mightily with learning all these levels. And, and one of the tips Gareth gave on our recent episode of Trophy Horrors was this level's really good for the 250 combo trophy. And I can say that I've done that now at least three or so times on this level. So that I would say that maybe don't go with level 1 for that. Go with uh, this level because it's I would say it's easier. And I've done it more times on this level than I have in the first level. So... Got the motorcycles. Got some pretty strong kicks there to be going head on with a motorcycle tire and winning there, Leo. Yeah, dupes the um, a driving level with the van. I mean, we have one where we're on the surfboards, kind of the hoverboards against uh, Bebop and Rocksteady. That'd be level three next. You know, one with the turtle van that would have been cool too. I feel like we do get a, a good bit of variety. You know, you get levels where you're you're flying in the sky, but you know you're mostly with hoverboards, and um, and not with the turtle van. The turtle van could have been cool too. Who knows? Maybe that could always be a DLC level. I'm always hopeful that they'll add more levels and bosses, because despite what you may believe or what even I may think, there are lots and lots of bosses they could still add. Well, not lots and lots, but they could still add a few bosses from older games, from the comics, from the. Um, the, uh, the cartoon from the, the toys, so a new level, especially, you know, where you drive around in a turtle van could be cool. And it's still possible, I would think. Don't forget your trophy for uh, eating all the pizza. I think you gotta eat 20 pizzas to get a trophy. We're gonna wait here for these guys to jump down. And of course, Tribute Games adding a whole bunch of new pizzas in this in this game. Okay, you're gonna hit this, so we get that person over there too. Yeah, adding the the infinite power pizza, the ten seconds of just ultimate power there. You get the multi heal pizza that heals everyone in your team. So they're doing some different work with the pizzas in this game. Nope. Of course, we got to go to a junkyard setting. We got Bebop back there on the TV. And then there's the uh, the vehicle that we're going to be chasing down in the next level. No, he never does. Ah. Oh. Once again, I will say, great boss fight music. And again, those grenades, if they hit the foot too, they can uh, friendly fire, so they can kill the foot as well. Ah, oh, you gotta love it. Such a Leo thing to say. Got the little dice instead of hanging in the window up by the, by the in the driver's cabin. You got them hanging down there on the bumper. I don't know what Bebop, Bebop and Roxy are doing, but all right. So we're already level five. And you know, Bebop and Rocksteady are, are that count for the bosses essentially of four levels in this game. But they do, you know, first you fight them alone, then you fight them in this this car, the Turtle Tenderizer, and then later on you fight them together. So every time you fight them, it's a little different. Even you know, let's see what are the challenges here. Uh, finish level unharmed. Well, uh, as you all will see, that's that's probably not going to happen because I always have trouble with the fight with the van, with the truck. I can never get to, you know close enough to hit him without getting too close to get smashed.
And as much as I would like have like had a remix soundtrack from older games, like Turtles in Time, I definitely think that uh, you know, all new, brand new soundtrack, an original one, is you know, it fits the new the new vibe of this game, the updated Turtles game. And I don't know how anybody else feels about this, but the, the Calabunk Collection, I'm still going to buy it, but I think playing this game has kind of dampered my desire to play that, because, let's be real, as good as Turtles in Time is, I mean, this game is the game that ousted Turtles in Time as the best Turtles video game. And, you know, my opinion, I know that some people don't agree with that, but, you know, there are a number of people out there that say that. And really, like, this is the best Turtles game, so going back and playing the, uh, the older Turtles games, I don't know, it just... It's not as exciting of a thought for me anymore. Like, I'm definitely going to want to play them again and get the trophies and stuff, but... Am I as excited to play them as I was before this game? Probably not, because I recognize that, you know... It's like going back and playing, like, an older Zelda... Like, the original Zelda game. After playing Ocarina of Time or, you know... Twilight Princess or Majora's Mask. It just doesn't feel as good, you know? And despite what Tricky might want to believe... Uh, a Link to the Past is not better than Ocarina of Time. Uh oh, 10,000 proven perks for dupes. Man, Leo's special move compared to the other turtles really sucks. I think that maybe uh, Raph might have the best one because he's got like that side tornado thing he does. Let's see. Oof. I can't remember, was it the arcade game, or was it Man Manhattan Project where they had the cars, you had to dodge the cars running towards you? Oh. Uh, and there's tons of variety to these enemies in this game, like, you got all the different foot soldiers, all the different colors of foot soldiers, they got different weapons you gotta deal with, which, you know, not just fighting, like, these guys, you gotta figure out the best way to approach all the different foot soldiers. Just, yeah, I, I will... I really hope this game gets consideration for Game of the Year. And, you know, Family Game of the Year, I think that it, it should be up there, too. But, like, Game of the Year, come on, this... This this game deserves consideration. And also, like, if you've ever played the multiplayer, the six-player six multiplayer, Depending on how, you know, how many people you have in the game, it scales the enemy, you know, HP, so... It's not like you do the same amount of damage per person, because if you did the same amount of damage to bosses and stuff, obviously it'd be a quick fight, but they scale it to the number of people, not only difficulty you're on, but also the number of people in, so... Definitely a lot of, um... A lot of thought went into the multiplayer of this. Oh. See, there we go. I will never beat this game, this level unharmed, because I can't, I can't do it. Oh. Did I just, I, I didn't even know you could hit uh, Roxas grenades back at him. Uh oh, here we go, this fucks me up every time. Oh shit. Ah, fucking tire. There we go. Dun 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 dun. Destroy the turtles. You know, you can definitely tell that Shredder's voice is not the same as it used to be in the cartoon. You know, I get it, but Rocksteady is someone who kind of sounds very similar. So, I don't know. It's It does kind of throw me off to hear Shredder's voice a little bit. Alright. Possibly one of my favorite game the levels in the game. With a couple of my favorite bosses. Rumble at the zoo with ground chuck and dirt bags. And I remember seeing press in the press pictures, the screenshots, where we saw ground chuck, so he was confirmed. But, um... It wasn't until that I saw the silhouettes that uh, I saw dirt bag and I was like this is incredible this is exactly what I wanted because these two we saw them in Manhattan Project on the NES but uh 
No, I had no proven bot. I did not know who did the, the voice of Shredder in the in the cartoon. Or at least if I did, that I've forgotten. Uh, we got some we got some gi giraffes in the background. I wonder if Joel and Ellie are back there in the background petting some giraffes. Yeah, seeing the silhouettes of both Ground Check and Dirtbag, who uh, have not been uh, in, a, in a Turtles game for a long, long time, definitely made me very happy. All uh, the hippopotamuses, watch out. At least they're not metal hippopotamuses like in Horizon Forbidden West. Uncle James Avery, Uncle Phil, from uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Rest in peace, Uncle Phil. Yeah, well, I guess I'm the asshole there because those foot soldiers were just enjoying a nice uh, popsicle. And uh, on a hot day. And uh, I've fucked up their mojo. And of course, it wouldn't be a Turtles game if you couldn't fall in the sewer and then have the, the, the comment. And I'm pretty sure Raph even has the line. They all have different lines when it comes to falling in the sewer, but I'm pretty sure Raph has a classic line when he says, who turned out the lights or something like that. His, his I think, is actually directly pulled from the older games. Who let all these damn birds out? Okay, we... For those uh, new to the, okay, these guys, one hit, one hit's done, you can just do a little, one little tap hit in there. Uh, I love when this foot soldier falls off. What a doofus. Oh, uh, here we go. I've definitely seen comments that this game is too easy, and I think normal, which I Let's see, I can't remember. I, I think I might be playing it on chilled. I can't remember exactly if I played it on normal or chilled. I'm pretty sure I selected chilled, but you know, honestly, the gnarly setting, like getting through that on arcade, through some of the last levels with all the stone soldiers and the triceratons. I don't know. It gets. I'm not saying it's super, super hard, but it definitely. Uh, I, I made, it, made it by the skin of my teeth to get that trophy. So if you're really looking for a challenge, you're obviously going to want to play a gnarly, but. Just kind of like the calm, cool, like easy-going feel of these other two uh, difficulties. I don't know. It just feels right. I don't want it to be... I want it to be fun. I don't want it to be like, you know, where the, ar the, ar the arcades of most beat-em-ups where it's like you are meant to fucking lose, so you, um... You have, uh... You're meant to pour quarters in, so it's it's difficult and you're supposed to die all the time. Like, I, I don't want that kind of vibe for this game. So I, I think they, they have a nice little, um balance for difficulty here. You know, I just want to go through and play as my favorite turtles and kick some butt. I don't want to, you know, be pulling my hair out. Uh-oh. Get out of the way. Bebop's and Rock City's coming through. All these monkeys start throwing bananas at people. Again, the little touches, that's what really matters in games, are the little touches. Also, I like that they're indiscriminately, the monkeys are indiscriminately throwing everything at other people. Doesn't matter. Your foot, your turtle, they're gonna show you what for. Oh, little monkey up there in the right, eating some popcorn. As we all like to do on the internet, we like to grab our popcorn and watch all the fights unfold. Well, he's up there watching watching all the fights unfold. Oh, yeah, you gotta be kidding me. I can't believe... I did it once to show everybody, but now I'm falling in there all the time. So yeah, don't like me some snakes. Look at this snake. Uh. All right. Of course, we got the, the gators here. Oh, here they are. Get the horns, partner. You're gonna get the horns, partner. Can you dig it, suckers? Obviously, Dirtbag is a found of Booker T. Tell me, can I dig it, sucker? Oh god. Oh, Jesus. I don't know why that attack is so hard for me to dodge. But yeah, ground check's charge attack is, uh...
Two of my favorite uh, turtles, toys, and villains right here. I love these guys. Cowabunga, Chevy. Oh, see, there you go. Ground Chuck hit uh, Dirtbag with his horns there. So, yeah, there is friendly fire among the enemies. Oh, God, Leo, your special is so wretched. Oh, how? How? All right, dirtbag's down. Nope. There we go. I always love a good daggummit. You've never heard of these guys? Come on now. I guess they were Manhattan Project, they were toys, they were in the cartoon. Tricky, you've never heard of these guys? Ground truck and dirtbag? Good lord. I was watching an AEW game stream where they had Orange Cassidy, Tremperetta, uh, Evil Uno, and Adam Cole streaming this game, and none of them knew who these guys were. How does nobody know who Ground Chuck and Dirtbag are? It's ridiculous. Alright, I believe we've got the Rat King coming up next. And just, I, I'll point out, the little visual cues on the map, like... The little, the crash to the Turtle Tenderizer there, you first see that when you go into the level, and there it is on the overall map. I just, I just love that kind of stuff. Alright. We got some Channel 6 news signs there in the back. We got some advertising there to, you know, just remind you how far we've come. People are just leaving wrenches lying around. God, hellfire. Littering and... Littering and so yeah, the pond cola here. Obviously, the um, the frogs. The um, oh god, what are their names? I just had their names. The um, Napoleon Bonafrog and all the rest. Like pond cola sounds terrible, but I love the fact that they put this in the hair just as a reference to the uh, the punk frogs. That's who they are, the punk frogs. Got another bebop, chef bebop ad there in the back, and of course. Crystal Arcade will be a foreshadowing to the next level, the mall. The mall level, mall madness. Don't, uh, don't play on train tracks, kids. And I, yeah, they put down, they put the pizza down here on the train tracks, and then the train eventually comes. Uh, Tricky, what level am I now? This is level five. This is the Rat King's level. never know where the foot will come from next. Uh, I believe I'm level 6, Tricky, to answer your question. Mousers wouldn't be a Turtles game without the Mousers. And don't forget to use those uh, barrels, the explosive barrels to your advantage and stuff like that because there are some challenges in the game that require you to kill enemies with traps. We got the Punk Frogs with more Cola, Pawn Cola, and I think... I can't be sure, but they obviously have, you know, four di there's four different punk frogs, which you see on the side of the machine there, but they also have four different like, varieties of cola, so maybe one for each frog. Rasputin and Napoleon Bonafrog and all, and the other two. Oh, well. That doesn't look healthy, all that green slime. Of course, we're turtles, and we were ba born in mutagen, so... Ain't no, ain't no matter to us. At this point, I don't even know if they need to put the button on there, because I've just played so many Turtles games that once I get bitten by one of the mousers and they're they're stuck on my, my arm, I just instinctively just start mashing stuff.
Ugh. Oh, that's right, there is a one of the cameo characters behind that vault there, so if you kick that open, keep your eyes open during the levels, because you gotta find all those cameo, cameo characters for a uh, trophy. I think my first time through this game, watch out for the Steam. My first time through this game, I popped like 15 or 16 trophies. Well, probably like 16, 17, actually. Uh, so, upon first playing through the story mode, you kind of get the impression, oh man, there's going to be lots of trophies that are going to be popping all over the place, but definitely slows down significantly as you get to some of the harder, more grindy trophies. And... Come on, Leo, show that show a little strength there. Do, 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 do. I need to uh, look up this soundtrack and just listen to some of the music because they... I mean, every aspect of this game, like, I don't really have any big complaints about the game. Like, there's a few quibbles here and there, like, you know, some of the boss fights, like, overall, I enjoy fighting all the bosses, and I think they did a good job on all of them, but uh, as we'll see with the Rat King here, I think they, they could have made little improvements here and there, so... But overall, I, I, it, it, it's hard to come uh, close to a perfect game in a way that they've come to here. I mean, they, if we're going to talk about perfect games, for me, this is, you know, this is a 10. Not perfect, but as close to perfect as any game will ever come. So, point out here, check out the Rat King ship, he's, his little throne, he's kind of sitting on there, tapping his toes. That's actually the, the craft that he's riding in Turtles in Time, where you're fighting him. So, a little throwback there to the old games, as they've done so well already. I am the Rat King, you're trespassing on royal ground. I, okay, so here's the one quibble I do have with this boss fight. I feel like the Rat King utilizes that too much. He relies on it too much because he jumps up there. You know, it's a cool attack, you know, and it, you know, shows his control over the rats. But I, I just feel like, you know, instead of having foot soldiers in here, you got the rats. It makes sense. Oh, he's going to slam me or he's going to try to throw me. But I feel like to some degree he relies on it too much, which slows down the fight some. I don't know. Maybe that's a good thing because the other boss fights you can get through them kind of quickly. So maybe it's good that this one boss has a, um, a mechanic that kind of time gates it, but it gets a little more annoying with Baxter Stockman later on when he goes into his little protective bubble and um, he shoots the big lasers at you. Yeah, watch out for that attack. Get the hell out of the way. Another classic villain. All right, number six, Mall Meltdown. Mall Meltdown. And if anyone can tell me where Tempestra is from, I'm... Unless I just can't remember the episode of the cartoon she was in, I am not super familiar with Tempestra. And I saw some people commenting online, like... They... they when they were looking at the, the cover art for this game, or at least the, the start screen... They, they looked at Tempestra and they circled her and it's like, is this a, an easter egg? Like, who is this character? So, if she is from Turtles lore in the past, I am not particularly sure who she is. Alright. Is that number, is that level 7? I believe. Tacos, who doesn't love some tacos? Which, wait a minute, hold on. I hope these are hot sauces and not ketchup and mustard because I'm sorry. I love mustard, I'm not putting mustard on taco, that's just... That's abusive. Oh, just ruining these foot. Oh, just ru these foot. We're just trying to get some food and. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, these are a pain in the ass. Yeah, these foot are just trying to try to get some food. As we can see, we got the pizza for the turtles, sushi for Splinter, so whenever they come to the mall to do some shopping, you know, in their trench coats and with their hats on, their private eye hats, just so they're in, in, in disguise, they can come get something nice to eat at the food court.
So I believe that getting to level 10, each character from level 10 will take you about an hour and a half to two hours each. And I guess that'll depend on which levels you play, because some of the levels have more enemies than others, and some of them have easier enemies than others, so you'll get through them faster, and you can just kind of replay them. The first two levels you can get through in less than five minutes, whereas some of these later ones you're definitely going to take a longer time. Yeah, you definitely have to bait these enemies to uh, get them to throw out their, their s flails. Unless you hit them early enough, but yeah, these are... A little more difficult to deal with than the other ones. We got the punk frogs back there. And one of them actually should be hiding behind uh, this sign right here when you uh, play through story mode for the first time. And you know... Arcade and story mode, they're not super different. I mean, you play through all the same levels. They, uh... It's just the big difference is that in arcade mode, you get a specific number of continues, a limit, and a finite number of lives, and you also have to do it all in one sitting. Where story mode, you can just do a level and then quit and come back to it, so you got save spots. You know, you get the little overworld, but I do really like how story mode, or in, in yeah, story mode, that you can go back and replay any level you want at any point. It's not like you have to play all the way through, you know, arcade mode to get to the mall again if you want to play the mall. You can just go to the mall and play the mall. So I do really appreciate that about story mode. Jesus. And see, these, uh, these things are definitely impervious at some point, so you gotta be careful you're not just sitting there swinging away. As I was doing right there. Foot doing some shopping out there today. A, a disco ball. Y'all remember the arcades? How awesome the arcades used to be? Those were the days. And someone, someone hit the jackpot here and... Wanted to be a kind soul and leave him for somebody else. Share the love. Come on, buddy. Do your thing. There we go. Alright. Shredder. Causing chaos as he will. Son of a bitch probably threw the, uh, the popcorn on the floor there. And this is one of those, it's weird because there's three, essentially three boss fights in one here because you got Toka and Razar here, which, gotta love the art style on these guys. I think that, you know, the all the bosses look really good, but I'm, you know, Bebop and Rocksteady always kind of look the same, whereas Toka and Razar, like, they, they look like they've really been updated in their art. They look, you know, quite a bit different. Well, not quite a bit different, but just like, you can tell there's a big update to them. And then... Razar with probably the most annoying boss attack in the game, that, uh, that stink cloud. Well, Tricky, apparently you don't know that much about turtles, my friend. Yeah, these, these guys look so good. I love the artwork in this game. Alright, oh, I want to show you guys this. Walk in there. Oh, you bastard. Uh, so if Toka walks into the stink cloud from um, Razar, here you go, there you go, he'll do that. Uh, and I don't know if, if, I assume most people, or a lot of people my age, have seen Secret of the Ooze, Turtles 2, but if you remember, they these two burp in that movie, and the turtles remark about how rank it is, so I have to imagine that attack came from the, uh, the movie, any kind of source material they can get for Toka and Razar. Oh, there we go again. Kind of, uh, the fact that the enemies can hurt each other is kind of just shows how kind of bumbling oafs they are. Boom. Nice. Good effects. 
All right, where are we heading next? All right, another Bebop and Rocksteady level. And we're just over 600 away from the Platinum Trophy, so. Oh, so as you will see later, uh, Bebop on the, on the, on the, I never noticed that before, but he's on the telephone there, and apparently he was calling the, uh, you'll see who, in, who shows up at the end of this level, but I guess he was calling another villain to be like, hey, can you come pick up this crank suit? We got the turtles after us. Of course, we go from the mall innards to the mall roof. You got the Crystal Arcade sign up here. Just, oh, love the continuity. Come on. Hey, give three cheers for that. And I believe that this, you gotta be careful on this level because it has a challenge where you cannot fall into a pit. And as you can see, you are surrounded by pits being on a rooftop, so. Use that evade, be careful. Oh, when we got these suckers, these guys, these... Well, oh! There we go. These guys are difficult to deal with, or more difficult to deal with than most. Got the way a foot cruiser sign. God, these guys. Uh, oh, oh, oh. This is where you need Donatello for that range. Taste antenna. Alright. Got all this foot graffiti going on here. It's almost like Jet Set, Jet Grind Radio, Jet Set Radio. The foot just had plenty of time to go around and just tag everything. All right, we're definitely getting this. Of course, with Leo's crappy special, it's... Let's see, let's do the other ones. Let's see, get up, Leo. Meteoric, you nice. I forget what destroying this does. Oh yeah, there we go. Give me some extra points. Definitely know all the points grinding up to 2,000. Nice little Robin Hood color of the archers. Except Robin Hood would never hang out with these jack wagons. Man, how could we go even higher to this Almost, I mean, I realize it's probably under construction, but it almost looks dilapidated skyscraper. So these guys, I don't know if you all remember, I remember them specifically from uh, the NES version of Turtles 2, the arcade game. I believe we saw them as early as the first level, the burning building where Rocksteady is, is the boss and holding April O'Neil hostage. Oh, hoo -hoo. yeah, I remember these sword guys. I remember they looked like ghosts to me when I was a kid. So we got the concrete mixer and we got the tools up here, so they obviously have to be working on something. Working on completing this building. Oh. Almost. Almost got me there, sword guy. Alright, and that box is gonna fall, so we definitely don't want to be underneath it. Bastard. There we go. Get out of the way. Yeah, and while you're going through these levels, you know, destroy everything you can, because you gotta, was it, destroy 200 objects for a trophy? So, gonna take you a little bit of time, not too bad, but just destroy everything you can going through. 
And who knows, sometimes you get a piece out of it. You know, as much as I loved as a kid going through these levels up, and we know we know who they called, they called Wingnut. And when I saw Wingnut in this game, that's kind of when I knew that when the bosses, as far as the boss is concerned, all bets were off. Like, anybody could be in this freaking game, so... But, I, yeah, I, seeing the Pizza Hut... Oh, we got Channel 6 in the background. Seeing the, um... The Pizza Hut ads as a kid, they were definitely cool, because it made it feel like a real-world, like a real-world, you know, location. But I don't think the game, you know, loses anything by not having any kind of Pizza Hut sponsorship. Oh. Leo, you gotta, you gotta get a new two two Boy Scottish. You gotta, you gotta get to a new saying here. All right, and of course we go to Wing Nuts level Panic in the Sky. Panic in the Sky. And also, on Dupe's earlier comment that the turtle van would have been cool to, you know, do a level one, the blimp, the turtle blimp, which you see in the background there, you know, if they could find a way to incorporate that, and you know, just kind of like a, a, a run and gun, kind of, a shoot em up, that kind of level, I think that would be cool as well, but... You should just have billboards of pizza flying in the background. I don't know, man, if you if you play this game and you don't want some pizza afterwards, I don't, I don't know. They're, it's it's starting to get to me. I don't eat pizza a ton. Oh, there we go. We just went up to number eight. But, uh, yeah, seeing this and, uh, oh, the radical move. All right. So I'm going to show that to you all when I get one. When I, I'll, I'll do it when I get to the boss, when I get to Wingnut, but... Yeah, this, I mean, this, this is, uh, these hoverboard levels, you know, we've seen them before in older Turtle games, but also, like, it's just, it has a little variety, so you're not just kind of, you know... Pressing right to, to walk or run to the next fight. And honestly, like, I have played this game so many times now, grinding to get the Platinum, and it's still not old, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, I, I still love playing these levels as much as I did, which is, is incredible. Like, that just... I mean, yeah, there's a certain element of nostalgia to it, but, I mean, it's, it's incredible how fresh this game still stays. And if they only added more levels and... A few more characters, like, it, it would be just fantastic. Do, don't even consider another game. Don't do a sequel or anything like that. Just give us a, more levels and more bosses, and that's... That would be fantastic. Oof. How much would it suck to be one of these foot soldiers and then... Because eventually you're going to run out of fuel, like you, you run out of fuel mid-air and you just go plummeting to the New York streets. Oof. Nice spinning blade attack there, Leo. Yeah, I love how he changes his stance whenever you change the way you're looking. The age old practice of pinning enemies against the oh the the side of the screen, and you can also use that to to build, bulk up that combo. Use the the side of the screen to help you there, like that. Ah. Man, that's a hell of a fall. <laughs> I almost feel bad for for the foot. It's always pizza time when you're a turtle. Ooh, nice little flex there, Leo. Little pose. Of course, we got the statue. Statue of Liberty is always a target for the Foot Clan. Always. It was in Turtles in Time, and here again in, in Shredder's Revenge. Wingnut's just like fuck it. Wingnut doesn't care about that suit. <laughs> Wingnut's like ah whatever. All right, so the radical move. We hit R1. And here we go. Basically, we just do more damage. We're gonna mess up Wingnut's entire world. 
if I can manage not to get hit. Yeah, that's gonna hurt, falling all that way. Yeah, so that level I got 47 total KOs, so this is not a great level to grind if you're grinding towards the, the 2000, because, you know, you'll get over 100 in the second level, but in this level you only get 47, so, oh, here we go. Another one of my favorite Turtles villains. Going to Coney Island. I'm sure Tricky Mick loves Coney Island. Oh, and look at that. You can see the, the in that last level, you can see, you can, we ended up, we can see the Statue of Liberty in the background. They look, Overworld, Statue of Liberty. Gotta love it. Got our friends the Punk Frogs here. Already fulfilled that special request, but yeah, let's... Oh, nope, 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 nope. Coney Island. My boy Leatherhead. Such a good level. Tricky if you're still... Oh, and we got Wingnut, he's... Yep. He's not having a good day. Tricky, how often you go to Coney Island? Come on. Come on, buddy. There we go. You don't like anything in Crooklyn, but isn't Coney Island supposed to be fun, Tricky? Tricky, you don't know Wing... My God, Tricky. Tricky, let's start with what Turtles villains you do know. I can't be the only Turtles fan out there that... You've never gone to Coney Island, Tricky. You have never gone to Coney Island. You live in New York. At least go there once for the... Oh, we got the... We got the boards here. You've seen that in previous Turtles games, too. Manhattan Project had them, but if you step on them... Okay, see, that's a little thing sometimes when you're transitioning from the, foregr the background to the foreground, especially if there's a difference in elevation. Your character can get stuck momentarily, but... I've always been able to get out of it. It's never been a, a long-term thing, but... Hello. I love this. You know, even if Tricky doesn't want to go to the real-life Coney Island, I think it's a really cool setting for a Turtles game. Nope. Oh, see, there we go. We got uh, we got the, more of these boards. And they're so easy to forget about because you're focused on the, um, on the enemies on screen, but they will kind of vibrate a little bit, and they do have that black outline to them, so just kind of keep an eye out. Look at that restaurant up there. Tricky, can you explain this to me, what you're doing up in New York? Burger Clams Spaghetti. Just seems like a weird combination. I don't know, I guess, you know. All menus maybe want to have a burger so that anyone can eat there, but then spaghettis for the kids and clams, you know, maybe for the adults. You get kebabs, you got hot dogs, you got more of the punk frogs, our buddies the punk, punk frogs up there. Tricky, why do so many of you New Yorkers just throw popcorn on the ground? There's a lot of trash. Tricky, is this the accurate, accurate representation of New York? Because there's a lot of trash on the ground in this game, and I'm concerned. Oh, you know, I'm an idiot. I could probably get this. Look at this. Trash piled out of the, gar the dumpster? So, spoiler, that guy in the background is, uh, is gonna come out and attack me at some point. Yep. Can you imagine, you know, arcade gear, or not, uh, fair games are, you know, rigged enough. Can you imagine, oh, these guys suck. These are the worst enemies in the game. Every time you hit them, they back up and they, and they throw size at you from the, ugh, it's awful. Um, but, uh, yeah, can you imagine an ar a, a fair game that's already rigged against you being run by the Foot Clan? Ugh. Your chances of winning go from, like, 1% to negative 1%. Yep. And those enemies, they don't allow you to pin them against the wall because if you pin them against the wall, then you can't slide in like that, so... Or you can't evade in, so they're gonna, gonna hit you with those size. Yep. Yeah, but, I mean, what, what else can I say about this game? Great bosses, the game, the animation's fantastic, the, the art style's beautiful. 
tons of variety in the enemies and the levels. Great level design. The soundtrack is fantastic. You got seven playable characters, 16 levels. Like it's, this is almost, a, again, the perfect Turtles game. And how, how do you unseat Turtles in Time as the best Ninja Turtles game ever made? Well, Shredder's Revenge. Tribute Games and Dottie MU answered that, so. Big shout out to Dottie MU for uh, bringing us the best Streets of Rage games. Sorry, Rick, that's it's just the truth. And Streets of Rage 4, and then the best Ninja Turtles game in Shredder's Revenge. I don't know why anyone wants to shoot those ducks, those cute ducks. Alright, here we go for, uh, you gotta do this for a trophy in the game, but you basically just pick a balloon, hit it a lot of times, and pop it, and boom, you get a trophy pop. There you go. I, I like how there's just all this chaos going around, and then you got this nice little carousel in the background. And watch out, we got another plank there. Don't want to step on that. Use the, uh, the roll to evade that plunger. What a ridiculous... We got bumper cars here. What a ridiculous weapon for a foot soldier to have in a, uh, or ammunition for a foot soldier to have in a weapon. A plunger. Ugh. Knew it was there, still couldn't help it. Thrills AK, a fight with Leatherhead. So in this boss fight, I guys want you, I want you all to pay attention in the background. The punk frogs are actually riding a roller coaster and every once in a while they will pop by on one of the roller coaster cars and they'll drop pizza for you and they can also drop an explosive barrel that can hurt you and hurt Leatherhead. So that's like a nice little added thing to um, to the boss fight. So yeah, you see the tra the tracks there, you see you the roller coaster. We got Leatherhead and Horde and all these stuffed bears in the back. Oh, see there, the punk frogs. It just kind of it takes this little, little thing that adds to the boss fight that I just, again, so, oh god, how much? There we go, get out of the way. Boom. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, guys. And uh, do not stand above the grates because Leatherhead, as he comes up, you can see he chomps. So, yeah, he will hurt you if you are standing on the grate that he pops out of. I need that pizza, punk frogs. One attack that I do miss from Leatherhead, you know, when you fight him and uh, bury my shell at Wounded Knee and Turtles in Time. There we go. Thank you, guys. I do, he does have an attack, one where he crawls across the ground, kind of reminiscent of, of his old toy back in the 80s and 90s. But also he'll throw out little crawdads. You know, he had those in the cartoon, he had them on his little belt there, his utility belt that he would throw at people. I wish that he had an attack where he threw crawdads at you in this. I wish they did a few more of those attacks from Turtles in Time. But uh, another, another great boss fight. Ugh, there we go. Punk Frogs helped me out again. Oh. You missed! Whenever you hit Leatherhead, he's holding his hat, and I was like, not my hat! Boom. Oh, I feel like gumbo. I feel like gumbo. Oh. Like Alright, so we have just over 300 more kills to go. Come back here with that android torso. Leave it to Donatello to be the coolest turtle, but sound like a complete, absolute nerd. All right, where am I going? Wrong way. Well, that's the great thing about this now. I've already beaten all this, and a few screws loose. so this entire level reminiscent of, of Alley Cat Blues for the first time we fought Metalhead and Turtles in Time. Donuts. Tricky, does, uh, does New York have good donuts? It's all in the water, right? Yeah, and I think another thing that made this game such a, a breath of fresh air is that the recent Turtles games have not been good. 
So, I mean, just because you have the format for Turtles in Time doesn't mean it's a good game, because obviously they had Turtles in Time reshelled, which I hear I didn't even play. I love Turtles in Time. It's one of my favorite games, and I didn't even buy it or play it because I heard it wasn't good. So just because you have the format there doesn't mean you're going to make him a good game. So, I mean, this this was all tribute games. I mean, yes, the Turtles license, but tri tribute games made a fantastic game here. So I think the fact that we haven't had a really, really good Turtles game in a long, long time, especially one devoted to the old school folk, all the old school fans like this game is, you know, a love letter to, those, to the old fans. Whereas, like, you know, some of the newer games, it's based on, like, Teenage Mutant Turtles 2007 or, you know, the newer versions of it. It's just, I'm sorry, those are just not as good. And I just don't want, don't want to, you know, fight those villains. I want to fight these villains. So I think a lot of that just, it's been such a long time since we had this style of Turtles game and one that was been so good that, uh, yeah, I, it's just spectacular. It just adds to the game even more. It makes me appreciate it even more. So... Find the hidden word. The hidden word better be Calbunga. If I can make up a school subject, what would it be? Uh, well, it would obviously be uh, the history of Teenage Mutant Turtles. That's what the school subject would be. I don't care how useful it is in real life or how applicable it is in real life. You know what? If you're trying to impress anybody, you're trying to make friends, just talk about the Ninja Turtles because who doesn't love the Ninja Turtles? Come on. You know, they say you learn a new thing every day, and well, hell, Tricky learned about ground check and dirtbag today, so it's been a good day for Tricky. And apparently I learned that New York isn't just a complete garbage-ridden land uh, hellscape, so, you know, that's something I learned today. That, you know, this, this game made me think there's just trash everywhere. what happens when the foot run amok in your city, they turn everything to chaos. Yo, no! Get out of the way! Tricky, you keep it clean. You keep it clean and send it to Ohio, Tricky. Don't ever send any of that trash to Kentucky, Tricky. We'll have some words. Yeah, in between playing PlayStation, you get paid... For those of you who don't know, Tricky gets paid taxpayer money to play PlayStation at his job for the New York Sanitation Department. So, oh, Foot Soldiers, there we go, we got Channel 6 on, because we know we saw the Foot Soldiers doing sit-ups earlier. And then we got Shredder in the background. How many how many times have we seen Shredder on a TV in the background of a, of a level? Alright. That right there is level 9. We got one more level to go. 250 kills. Yeah, go Green Machine. That's our life motto, everybody. Go Green Machine. Unless it's Gang Green, then then don't go Green Machine. That would have been a good name for a Transformer, uh, a, a trash truck Transformer, Gang Green. Tube TV, so outdated. Oh, come on, Tricky. You know what? We all we all gotta have some. You know, tube TVs. They're classic. They're retro. Who doesn't Who doesn't want one of those? Play. If you're gonna play on your NES or your Super Nintendo, don't you want to do it on a tube TV? Those TVs that are heavy as fuck and hard to move. Whenever you know you want to move your TV to a different location to play games. Well, it's a good thing you'll finish them off yourself, Leo, because there ain't nobody else here. I hope y'all are jamming out to the music as much as I am because, my god, someone made a beautiful baby in this music. Tricky, you probably can't even see ultra high definition that well. Also, some games shouldn't be... Why do you want to play an NES game in, in high def? Why does that matter? It's like, I want to look at garbage through a high-definition camera. That's not, uh, well, I'm not trying to compare the old games to garbage, but it's like, you know, some things you can't pretty up any more than they already are. So why why does it matter that, uh... Oh, I'm 
Need some health. But why? Oh, there we go. Ask and you shall receive. We got Metalhead here. So you can see the toad flip you off clearly. Well, you certainly deserve it, Tricky. Because toads never flip me off. Oh, and one of the things you guys can can do to get your special moves more quickly, because you got that meter, of course, up there. Oh, you don't want to do it now, because you don't know who Metalhead is. Have you never played Turtles in Time at the very least, Tricky? I mean, my god. Uh, so you can taunt and earn yourself another special move. And we're going to go Radical. Metalhead is a classic Turtles villain. It's like you've never... Uh, tricky, my god. Again, on the show tonight, uh, which will be coming out... Boom! Oh, I didn't even know you could do that! Oh my god! I don't know if you all just saw that, but I just hit one of Metalhead's rockets back at him. That was... Oh my god, I fucking love being a turtle! Uh, anyway, Tricky, on the show tonight, I'm going to ask you to name all of the Turtles villains, the classic Turtles villains you can, because, my god, it seems like you know nobody. It's also clear to me now. The Turtles are my friends. Welcome back to reality, Turtlehead. Or Metalhead. Well, apparently, Tricky, you need to revisit the the game Turtles in Time because you haven't played it nearly enough in your life. And are you going to get the Calabunga Collection to replay that game? All right, so going to another really cool setting here, the museum, where we're going to fight off the Triceratrons. And, you know, we had some of the big mouser robots getting kind of difficult there, but this is where the enemies really ramp up. Tricky, you ain't eating turtle soup. Tricky, you eat... The only things you ever want to eat are frickin' pasta. And maybe the occasional Chinese food. You're not getting the collection. Why do you hate the Ninja Turtles? But yeah, Tricky, you're not eating turtle soup because all you ever want to eat is pasta. And pizza. Italian. You, you'll, you'll eat Italian food, and to my, my knowledge, the uh, turtle soup is not Italian. Again, when the enemies take hits, they all look very different. The, the developers of this game, Tribute Games, said that they one of the reasons they didn't want alternative costumes is because they put so much effort into the animation of the um, the characters and stuff. And you can see that in, just in all the villains too, how they all have different animations for when it gets um, when they get hit. They all act and react differently, so it's super cool. And also, Tricky, can you explain to me why there is there are valuable artifacts on the ground underneath glass? I mean, I assume no one can break that glass, if, you know, without trying super hard, but you have valuable artifacts that people are just walking over. What is this? What are you doing in New York? Okay, Tricky, I want you to look at that. It's marinara, and you just said Mariana sauce. You sit there claim to be Italian, and you just called it Mariana sauce. Sir, you are going to catch shit for this so hard. Okay, well, you sh still shouldn't be putting valuable artifacts on the ground. What, you ain't got enough room in New York to put your, your artifacts on the walls? How does it autocorrect? People type Marinero far often than they type Mariana. How do you... Like, people only type Mariana, maybe for, you know, the, per the, the person who's named that, but, like, the Mariana Trench. So, how is it going to autocorrect Marinero to Mariana? Oh, tricky. No, sir, you're still catching hell for this. No excuses, play like a champion. Alright, so we're at 8, 877, or 1877, so we got just over 100 to go, 123 kills to go, so I'm likely going to have to go into, I guess, the equivalent of Dimension X. I don't know if it's 
Dimension X, I forget what it's... I forget what the name of it is, Balarfalon or, or something, but uh, yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to travel. No, actually, no, 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 never mind. We will probably finish up our, our Platinum Trophy run on Baxter Stockman's level, which is the Underground Lab, next. So yeah, what, 12 levels in and, uh, yeah, not a bad run here. Yeah, those guys with the heavier weapons, you can't throw them, so. Woo! Some serious weaponry. Are you are you fucking kidding me, Tricky? You've got to be shitting me. You're you're pulling my leg here. You know who Baxter Stockman is, because if you don't know who Baxter Stockman is, you didn't watch any turtles. We got these assholes ruining artwork. You know, got the, just great, just great. Just do whatever you want. Just piss on history. It's fine. Do those guns on the background have? Dinosaur feet as the at the head of them, it, shooting off dinosaur feet, shaped ammunition. Haven't checked out the new merch. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna check out any of the new merch if you don't start studying up on your turtles, villains. All right, give me this infinite pizza. And watch in the background as these enemies get sucked into the void. Gonna grab our pizza and we're gonna hit the boss fight. That looks like the most uncomfortable chair in the background. He's got a pillow on a metal chair. I'm sorry, I don't wanna... Don't want to send that throne, and of course Leo has to be as cheesy as possible and say you're about to be history while fighting in a museum. That's classy, Leo. We're just gonna go ahead and finish you off. No, they are not making up villains. The Triceratons. Triceratons are in like the old Turtles fighting game on the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. So the Triceratons have been around for a long, long time. You just don't pay attention. Oh, look at Splinter. He's using the uh, the carpet or the drapes from the, the museum to, to lower himself down into the into the abyss. Tricky, I'm convinced that you don't know jack shit about turtles. It won't fly. Baxter Stockman. And I think this is going to end... The the Triceratons as a as a whole tricky. All right, hold on, tricky. I'm gonna pause the stream real quick and I'm gonna look up and see when this character was introduced. So, the uh, turtlepedia.fandom.com says Zorax, 1987 TV series, Captain Zorax was the leader of the Triceraton Invasion squad in Night of the Dark Turtle. So, hmm, should I, Tricky? Yeah, Tricky, I'm pretty sure this guy has been around for a long time and you just don't, uh, don't know what you're talking about. So yeah, that guy's been around since like the 1987, like, cartoon series. Oh yeah, sounds like lies. Whatever you say. Baxter Stockman's got a serious operation under here. He's got, he's been down here burning coal. Sorry folks, even though I'm from Kentucky and we got coal industry here, I'm not a, not a friend of coal. Get out of here. Stop polluting with coal. Get this shit out of here. Get it out.
Ooh, nice little parry there. Foot soldier guy. All right, so this, obviously the floor's electrified, so just come up here, hit this, and you're safe for anything you want. No need to worry about it. Uh, I never got any coal in my Christmas stocking, thank you very much. I was always a, I always got good grades. It's a very well-behaved child. I was a smart mouth, but I was, was a well-behaved child. Although I did get, uh, as a joke, I got some of that coal bubble gum. I don't know if anyone else ever got saw that, but they eventually made bubble gum that was like coal. So, little coal pellets you could chew. No, Tricky, I'm not a fan of coal. I'm not a friend of coal, as they would say down here in Kentucky, because uh, it's, a, it's a pollutant. So, I mean, obviously, I, I, yes, I do use gasoline in my car because I have to, but if we could cut down on fossil fuel usage, that would help us a lot in this world. Proven Botch is giving Tricky Mick the owner of the website Proven Perks. Tricky, you jamming out to this music, this great music. There we go. No need for Mugen. And we are an honorable sensei. We are platinum solid. Alright, you gotta watch out for these fans because they will most definitely hurt you if you, um... Step on them when they're going. Hoping some of these foot soldiers are dumb enough to, to step on them. Oh, these guys are a pain in the ass. These are far worse than the mousers. I don't have the trophy alerts up. Uh, well, I got a trophy alert on my screen. I don't know about you. I don't know. You mean I don't have the trophy alert up? What are you talking about, Tricky? We kind of oh god, this is the worst part of the game right here, absolute worst, because these fucking things, they will, oh no, they come up so quickly that it's easy to get caught in a cycle of just getting frozen over and over again. So yeah, you can piss off. Well, it showed on my screen, so if you're watching my screen, sir, you would have seen it. Oh, we can see we oh we see the foot soldiers in the back. They're getting spray painted, and of course a few of them came out this little door here. We're gonna conveyor belt. We're gonna see them um, coming out get on a conveyor belt, giving their plunger guns. God, I hate these enemies. I think I would rather fight any other enemy in this game than these little turds. Oh. They're also getting the, the black the black spray paint. <laughs> I'm paying more attention to the foot soldiers in the background than I am to the chaos surrounding me in the foreground. It's when you know you're playing a good game. It's when the background's that interesting. Going all wild. Lasers, watch out for the lasers. Yeah, no thanks. That's not happening. Whew. Oh my god, Leonardo's special is so crappy. It's like it'll only hit the enemies if the enemies are right on you. How do you make mousers even more, more of a pain to deal with? Well, you make a bigger one that spits out little ones. That's that's exactly how you do it. Oh, 
Also tricky, yes, I think this will be my last level because I would like to go watch some Umbrella Academy with Ashley, so I think we're gonna be doing that after this, but finish off Baxter Stockman first. Oh, Matt, mutated Matt Flyantist. Someone had some real fun with that. Alright. Radical. Oh. And since Baxter Stockman is obviously in the air and you gotta jump to hit him, he is kind of the most annoying boss to hit. As I have not yet... Oh. Embarrassing. Okay, so this part... He definitely can stall for time with this part because this can definitely drag out this fight with him doing that over and over again. Alright, well now we're getting some hits on him. Here we go again. Oh, come on. Saw that attack in Turtles in Time. I think it was yellow instead of blue. No one likes a quitter. I'm not a quitter, Tricky. If no one likes a quitter, then why didn't you go back and get the Jedi Fallen Order Platinum, Tricky? Wow, oh, see, during that try attack, all you gotta do is jump in the air and you can avoid it, but I couldn't avoid anything that time, so didn't do me any good. Well, that's rude, Tricky. You shouldn't say that about yourself. You, you no good ninjas. Oh, Baxter Stockman, you ought to be used to losing by now, my friend. Oh man, this would be a good level to uh, to grind on because it got 142. Well, eh, maybe not because it took me almost twice as long to, to beat that as opposed to the first level, the second level. So maybe not. Yep, we finally got Krang all reformed, or at least his his body suit. And there we are, Technodrome. All right, y'all. Well, that is going to be it for this stream. I got Leonardo to 10, and I think that is going to be it. Got to go to the front screen and sync up my platinum here. I thank you all for joining me. Uh, I, like I said, I love this game so much, and I am just so glad that so many people in the community and just so many people just out there have, have been, you know, giving it so much praise and get this, sync this trophy up, sync this platinum. Ooh, it's beautiful. No, I don't want that. Get out of here. I don't want trophy settings. Sync that up. Come on. There we go. It's got some work to do still in Assassin's Creed Origins, but yeah. Platinum Trophy, 0 .07 of players, so... You know, I'm not, not as good as Dupes. Dupes was one in the top ten, I think, number eight in the entire world to earn the Platinum Trophy, but, uh... But, yeah. Definitely glad to have that one, so... Yeah, I know, Tricky. I, he, he told me to only, only hear my mic, so... Alright, folks, that is going to be the end of the stream. Uh, hopefully later this week. I've got to edit the show this week, but hopefully later in the week I can stream some Assassin's Creed Origins. But uh, hopefully you all have enjoyed this look at Shredder's Revenge. Hopefully you enjoyed my commentary, me trying to point out all the little references I get. But uh, yeah, if there's anything that you that I missed that you saw, please feel, feel free to share it on the, on the Facebook group. So uh, again, thanks for joining, and uh, we'll see you guys on Wednesday.